Hero animated me. Hey, about that intro, huh? Huh? Hey everyone, Kirsten here, and welcome to my sketchbook. So, I'm just gonna jump right on into it. Varying your art style. I'm gonna be making this into a little series because the internet just loves these things. And I need some portfolio work. And just so you know, this isn't going to be a video about stealing art styles, mainly because I think there's a lot of videos like that, and I want to pretend to be original. Just for the record though, I don't think you can steal an art style for a number of reasons, but mainly because our styles change over time. I mean, hey, look at my style. Anywho, so what do I mean by varying an art style? Varying an art style means differentiating characters enough to which the audience can tell them apart, but not so much that they look like they come from two different universes. And I want to make one thing clear, variation doesn't mean arbitration. When I vary my art style, I'm going to be doing things intentionally, not just randomly. Now this video isn't meant to be me lecturing you guys on what to do. It's more of me explaining what I did to vary my art style and maybe some of those things can help you vary yours. When planning this exercise, I decided to apply certain principles I had learned in my animation classes. The first one being using shapes to convey character traits. This may be something you never realized, but we associate different characteristics with three different shapes. Squares, triangles, and circles. Squares can give a character a blocky sort of look, which gives the audience the impression that they are very stubborn. Kind of like Wreck-It Ralph or Mr. Incredible. Triangles and sharp edges are used for more villainous characters, usually to imply malicious intent. Kind of like Yzma from Emperor's New Groove. Circles are used for sweet and non-threatening characters, kind of like Russell from Up. I don't know if I made this clear, but I like Disney. These shapes can be applied to different aspects of a character, and multiple can be applied as well. And the second principle I kept in mind was that there should be size variation throughout a character. However, there needs to be a sense of balance. See, for example, in my cartoony style, I had a giant head, a small body, a medium booty, and bigger feet. I was trying to have size variation throughout the body with the head and the feet balancing each other out. But if I keep doing the same thing over and over again, it would get kind of bland. I've already done it to three different characters already that you know of. So it's time to change it up a bit. With those principles in mind, I chose to draw three characters, Jeff, Alistair, and the mayor. Ready? Let's get started. Ooh, nice transition. So I started off by playing with the basic shapes and applying them to certain aspects of my cartoony style, like the eyes, noses, and heads. And I turned this little experimentation into a guide that I used for all the characters. And if you choose to do this, and I highly recommend you do, it's a good way to develop your art style by showing you all the possibilities of what your style can be. Not to mention it's a good time saver for character design. If I hadn't made this sheet first, I'm pretty sure I would have at least 5 hours of footage for each character, and I don't want to have that much footage on my computer, so... And I'm sure you guys have noticed that I'm not sketching in Photoshop like I usually do. And the reason for that is more of personal preference. Photoshop for me is really nice for graphics and nice clean pieces, but I've always had trouble sketching in it for some reason. So I used this journal app on my computer to sketch out the guide sheet, but then I remembered that I had Autodesk Sketchbook on my computer as well. And this video isn't sponsored in any way, shape, or form, but I do think Autodesk Sketchbook is a good alternative to Photoshop if you don't have enough money for it. It's actually pretty decently priced and it's very similar to Photoshop in many ways. Anywho, in short, making a guide like this can really help you decide what works and what doesn't work with your style, so that way you're not having to figure that out when you're designing your characters. Also, don't be afraid to be inspired by other people's styles, because your personal style should reflect what you like. You know, steal like an artist, or borrow like an artist, if you will. Like for example, my style doesn't really have any specific inspirations, but it does have some resemblance to other things like the Powerpuff Girls I've been told or some dolls from the early 2000s which was my childhood. 
So you can kind of see that in my style. And I'm not saying to go out and directly copy other people. I'm just saying that if there's an aspect of someone's style that you like, go ahead and try to apply it to your style. It'll come out in your own way. Okay, so on to the first character. This guy is named Jeff. And some of my older Instagram followers may recognize him from a comic I did back in 2017. Here's a frame of it on the screen. And as you can see, he looks like a carbon copy of my character at that time. Back then I had a little trouble with same face syndrome. So let's fix that. So the way I picture Jeff was like a depressed college student, you know, tired all the time, working two jobs, a little irritable at times. I also had a little bit of the California stereotype guy in there. Even though speaking as a California girl, I don't really know of anyone who talks like that, so... The initial pose of him I drew was to convey his character by having a very slouched appearance, visibly very tired, holding a cup of coffee, and in a worker's uniform. In terms of design, as I said before, Jeff was kind of like a copy of my character with different accessories. And I wanted to convey the contrast between his personality and my personality. My character is very optimistic and bright and sunshiny, whereas Jeff is a little bit more antagonistic and pessimistic. And since my character has a little bit more of a roundish appearance, I wanted to give him a little bit more of a squarish appearance to highlight that contrast. I made his head more of a combination of a square and a triangle, and his eyes more of a trapezoid. And despite these changes, I chose squares because he is an antagonist, but I didn't want to make him so antagonist that he's a villain. I wanted to just highlight contrast between my character and his character. And I never really pictured him as a bad guy, just a guy who's really tired and isn't particularly zealous about certain things. Since these are going to be model sheets I put in my portfolio, I added some facial expressions and some poses. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do this for all the characters in this video, mostly for time, mine and yours. For the happy face, I gave him a little bit more of a calmness, just to show that there is a softness to him. But I also made the last pose of his an angry pose, because he is the kind of guy who's more likely to get angry than extremely happy. That's Jeff. So this next character is one I have not shown on the internet before, until now. He's the villain for the graphic novel I would like to write at some point in the future. So far, I've only drawn him once. Boom. Now, I don't have the universe completely worked out yet, just a general setup. But basically, he's the leader of a colony of beings called the Painters. And essentially, they can warp space and time with the use of their artistic tools, in Alistair's case, a fan brush. Since Alistair is a villainous character, I wanted to incorporate a lot of jagged edges and triangles. However, I didn't just want to make him a bunch of triangles. I wanted to incorporate other shapes to give him more complexity. So I focused on giving him more of a blocky appearance. Because I never really imagined him as a villain evil for the sake of being evil, rather just a stubborn individual who doesn't handle their anger in a healthy way. So, in terms of design, I gave him a head that was a combination of a square and triangle that was a little rounded. And I tried to incorporate more triangular and jagged features, like his mustache, nose, and eyes. I also made his weapon of choice a fan brush because it's triangular. Actually, when I was drawing his eyes, I realized that they kind of resembled a jack-o'-lantern in a way. And in the original sketch, I gave him this headgear that would perpetuate his blockiness. Who knows, maybe I'll give it more meaning in the story. And unlike Jeff, I just stuck with some facial expressions for this video because I wanted to show what he looked like without that headgear and to keep this video under 20 minutes. So for this model sheet, I chose four basic expressions. Happy, sad, scared, and mad. And as you can see, in all four of these, I made him without his headgear so that way you guys can see what he looks like without it on. And when it comes to the expressions, I didn't really make them much different than I would for any other character. However, I made his happy face a little more calm, 
That way there's more of a softness to him. And it shows that there's more to his character than just a devious, sinister smile. It shows that there's kind of a kindness to him. That's all I really have to say about this character, so enjoy the rest of the sketch. And yeah, that's Alistair. And the final character I'm designing is the mayor of the town. So the reason I chose to design this character is A, I have never drawn him before. B, I wanted to have a well-rounded group of characters for this video. We've got the blocky board character, we've got the villain, and now we've got the happy-go-lucky character. And C, I wanted to work with that size variation I mentioned earlier with the body type. I wanted the mayor to be viewed as more like an ally character, however, I wanted him to be stubbornly enthusiastic, like outgoing to a fault. So I didn't make him perfectly round, I gave him a little bit more of a square contour, but he's still very rounded as well. I gave him a gumdrop shaped head, because I thought it would work better with the upper body, since for his character I tried to make the upper body bigger, as opposed to the booty. Hmm, <laughs> booty. And since I have never drawn this character before, or even this kind of body type before, it took a little working out to make sure the proportions were right. Like I said before, I was focusing on his upper body being the biggest part of him, so I made his legs shorter to balance him out. I also focused on some pose sketches for this character, so that way I can work better with the body type and that could also express his very enthusiastic personality, as well as his timid one. Also, quick side note, I realized that when I was drawing this character, the body type kind of reminded me of my dad. So, take inspiration from everywhere, I guess. I will try to make more sketches of this character in the future, but I don't want this video to go over 25 minutes, so... When editing this video, I realized I have a lot more footage than I have words to describe it. <laughs> And that was the mayor. And yeah, here are the characters I spent the last few weeks designing. I actually like how they turned out. They all look different, but they still look like they live in the same universe. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I also hope you got some inspiration to do this at home. And if you choose to do this and want to share, please post it with the hashtag LittleAnimatedMeSketch. And mayhaps I will post it on my Instagram stories. Also, one quick announcement before I go. I want to tell you a little bit more of what I plan to do with this channel. I'm going to center this channel around animation and its aspects. Like character design or story structure, stuff like that. I'm also going to be uploading every two weeks instead of every week. That way I can make sure I have a quality, well-edited product for you guys to watch. Also, I'm in college. Enough said. And that's about it. Until next time, have an animatedly great day. Bye!